Hello all. In the previous video, part 1 of caries activity test, we saw about 4 main tests of caries activity. That is lactobacillus colony count test, Snyder test, Alban test and swab test. In this part 2 video, we will see about streptococcus mutants counting tests which includes 3 tests and also these 4 special tests known as salivary buffer capacity test, salivary reductase test, phosphoric calcium dissolution test and ORA test. So let us start with streptococcus mutants level in saliva. The principle of this test is based on the plaque samples collected from discrete sites and in those plaque samples, the number of streptococcus mutants colony forming unit present per volume of saliva is calculated. The incubation is done in MSA agar that is mitis salivaris agar. It is a selective streptococcal medium as it suppresses mostly all the non-streptococcus mutants colonies. It consists of 20% sucrose and bacitracin. And the procedure is as follows. Tongue blades from which the samples are obtained are dipped in MSA or MSB agar in 37 degrees Celsius for 48 hours at 95% and 5% CO2 gas mixture. The interpretation of this test is as follows. When the level of streptococcus mutants is greater than 10 to the power of 5 per ml of saliva, it is unacceptable that is increased caries activity. Colonization of new surface happens only when the uh, count is greater than 10 to the power of 4 per ml. That is, new colonization of new surface does not occur when it is less than 4.5 into 10 to the power of uh, 4 streptococcus mutants colony forming units per ml or 10 to the power of 3 per ml for occlusal or fissure surfaces. The first one will go for smooth surface caries. The ad main advantage of this streptococcus mutants test is that it will act as an adjunct to caries management as frequency of isolation of streptococcus mutants is increased prior to initiation of caries rather than progression of caries unlike lactobacillus. The main disadvantage of this test is that the shelf life of MSA agar is very less and we cannot differentiate between carrier and cariogenic patients and streptococcus mutants is only 1% of the plaque flora and and seen in specific sites only which will limit the advantages of this test. The next test is the dip slide method for streptococcus mutants count. This test is also based on the streptococcus mutants count in saliva but the procedure is as follows. Paraffin stimulated saliva is collected and it is undiluted and MSA or bacitracin coated slides are used for incubation of this saliva in the presence of carbon dioxide and 30 to 7 degrees Celsius for 48 hours. This coated slides are screwed in cover tube and sealed in candle jar therefore the name dip slide method. Interpretation is given as follows. If the colonies are discrete that is separate and under 15x magnification the colony forming units observed are less than 200 then the caries activity is low. If the colonies are decreased but under 32x magnification, the colony forming units are greater than 200, then the caries activity is medium. If the colonies are very tiny and uncountable, even at 32x magnification, then the caries activity is termed as high. The next test is Streptococcus mutants screening test. In this test, there are two methods, either using toothpick for plaque collection or tongue blade for saliva collection. In the first method using toothpick, the action is by diluting plaque sample streak on selective culture media. The equipments needed include sterile toothpick for collection of plaque, platinum loop for streak culture on selective culture media, and MSA plates plus sulfur dimethyl and ringer lactate solution which is also sterile. The procedure is as follows. Gingival third of buccal surfaces from there, plaque is collected one from each quadrant with a toothpick and it is diluted in ringer solution and incubated in MSA agar at 37 degrees Celsius for 72 hours. Total colonies in 10 fields are counted. 
In the second method, the action is as follows. Number of Streptococcus mutants in mixed paraffin stimulated saliva is incubated in MSB agar. It is useful in large number of school children. It is more easier than the toothpick method. Equipment required here include paraffin wax, sterile tongue blade, petri dish with MSB agar. The procedure here is the paraffin is chewed for one minute which will increase the plaque microorganisms presence in saliva and after which the tongue blade is rotated for 10 times and incubated in MSB agar at 37 degrees Celsius. The important point here is counts of 100 colony forming units in this method is directly proportional to 10 colony forming units per ml of saliva by conventional methods. The advantage is that it is simplified practical and avoids the necessity of collecting saliva no transport media or dilution techniques are followed so that's all about streptococcus mutants test now we will see about salivary buffer capacity test we have to remember that buffer capacity of saliva is inversely proportional to the caries activity with that in mind, you have to remember that this test works by calculating the ML of saliva, the ML of acid required to lower the pH of saliva. That is, it measures the buffering capacity of saliva. The more acidic the saliva is, the increased caries activity you will face. Therefore, the buffer capacity of the saliva is measured as follows. Saliva is collected, that is 5 ml is collected and pH of saliva is adjusted to 7.0. And then lactic acid is added till pH of sample decreases to 6.0. The amount of lactic acid needed to reduce pH from 7 to 6 is the measure of buffer capacity of saliva. The advantage is that this test is simple but the disadvantage is that it has decreased correlation with the caries activity of the individual. The next test is the salivary reductase test. It is based on the activity of the reductase enzyme present in salivary bacteria. The procedure is that saliva which is collected is mixed with diazoresorcinol dye. The color change or the caries conduciveness is calculated after 15 minutes. The advantage is that no incubation is needed and quick results are observed. The disadvantage is that brushing or intake of food will affect the results. The interpretation is as follows. The color change for the first 15 minutes, if it is blue, then the result is given as non-conducive and score of 1 is given. If the color change is orchid, then slight conducive nature of uh, the individual is noted and score is given as 2. Even after 15 minutes, the color is red, then score is th given as 3 and moderately conducive nature is noted. The color change of red immediately if it is seen a score of 4 is given and a highly conducive nature is the interpretation. Color change to pink or white immediately will be interpreted as with a score of 5 and extremely conducive nature is noted. The next test is phosphoric calcium dissolution test. This test works by the principle which determines the a milligram of powdered enamel which is dissolved in 4 hours by the acid formed when patient's saliva is mixed with glucose and powdered enamel. The procedure is as follows. 25 ml of saliva is collected which is paraffin stimulated and one part is used to analyze the calcium content already present. The remaining part is introduced into an 8 inch sterile test tube and 0.1 gram of powdered human enamel is added. It is sealed and shaked for 4 hours. Calcium content analyzed after the 4 hours will give you the dissolution capacity of the saliva. Advantage is that correlation is good but there are very limited studies. The disadvantage is that the complex equipment it which and the expensive nature of the study and the need of trained personnel to carry out this study. To note an important thing, chewing paraffin will increase the glucose uh, nature of the saliva and therefore 5% glucose is added in the calculations. The final test. ORA test given by Rosenberg et al. in 1989 for estimating the oral microbial levels. The principle is that based on the rate of oxygen depletion by microorganisms in expectorated milk samples. To note here, normally the bacterial enzymes have 
aerobic dehydrogenase enzyme this enzyme transfers electrons or protons to oxygen this electrons will get utilized by uh, this oxygen will get utilized by aerobic organisms but in the presence of aerobic oxygen uh, organisms the electron is accepted by methylene blue and it gets reduced to leucomethylene blue and it reflects the activity of aerobic organisms the procedure is as follows mouth is rinsed vigorously with 10 ml of sterile milk for 30 seconds and is expectorated the expectorate is collected and three in 3 ml of that expectorate 0.1% of methylene blue which quantity of 0.12 ml is thoroughly mixed and placed on a stage and for every 10 minutes the color change is noted lesser the time taken for color change the higher the infection with aerobic organisms the advantage is that the it is less time consuming economic and non toxic vehicle is used disadvantage is that there is lack of specificity on what type of organism it is the to conclude the caries activity test we have to note that there are many recent advances in these tests but dental caries is a multifactorial disease and one factor alone cannot be uh, cornered or centralized for the presence of dental caries therefore there are uh, multiple opportunities for creating new tests which will uh, analyze multiple factors at the same time so see you soon in the next video hope you got a quick idea on the caries activity tests available thank you